Hello everyone, so today's English lesson, the first English lesson is a sentence builder task. So you're basically using the illustrations from the book that we've been reading, uh, Egyptian Cinderella, to develop some descriptive sentences. So I'm going to first of all read the next couple of pages of our book Egyptian Cinderella. If you remember, uh, we last read were uh, Rodopis had been left behind by the servant girls and she was upset because the hippopotamus had splashed mud on her slippers. So the next page goes. She polished her shoes on the hem of her tunic until the rosy gold glittered in the sun. Then she carefully put them on the bank behind her. Washed the linen, weaved the garden, Rodopis began again, when suddenly a shadow fell into the water. Rodopis jumped. A great falcon, the symbol of the god Horus, circled in the sky, with wings spread so wide that they blotted out the sun. Greetings to you, proud Horus, Rodopis murmured. She bowed her, bowed her head and felt a brush of earth on the back of her neck. When Rodopis stirred to lift her eyes, she saw the falcon soar away. Dangling from his talons was one of her beautiful slippers. Stop, she pleaded. Come back. But the bird did not heed her. He flew towards the sun until he was no more than a dark speck against the gold. Rodopis bit her tongue. Once she was worse than none at all. Now she'd have to dance like a stork, hopping about on one foot. And even the monkey would laugh. Rodopis took her slippers, slipper into her tunic and returned to her laundry, sorting the river with, river with her tears. After Rodopis had lost sight of the falcon, the mighty bird followed the course of the Nile to the city of Memphis, to the square where the pharaoh was holding court. There the falcon watched and waited. The pharaoh's name was Amasis. On his head wore, wore the, on his head he wore the red and white crown of the two of two Egypts. The double crown was heavy and pinched his ears. He preferred driving his chariot fast as a wind to sit on the throne. Amasis yawned. That very moment the falcon dropped the rose red slipper into his lap. The slipper was so bright that Amasis thought it was a scrap of the sun. Then he saw the falcon wheeling overhead. The god Horus sent me a sign, exclaimed the, the pharaoh. He picked up the rose red slipper. Every maiden in Egypt must try this shoe. She whose foot it shall fit shall be my queen. That is the will of the gods. And Amasis dismissed the court, called for his chariot, and began his search at once. When the Egyptian servant girls arrived in Memphis, they found the throne empty and the streets deserted. They were so angry on their return that, that even seeing Rodopis without her rose red slippers did not please them. The slaves are better by off their foot, snapped Skipper. Okay, so the um, character of Amaze is actually based on a real Egyptian pharaoh who reigned uh, 570 to 526 BC. As you know from your history lessons, uh, a pharaoh is an Egyptian king. So he was the 26th pharaoh of Egypt and was the last great ruler um, before the Persians conquered Egypt. Our task today then is to complete the worksheet, the worksheet uh, building description sentences by adding adjectives, verbs and prepositional phrases. So as you can see, I've started to do that there. Now, so the easiest part um, will be simply picking out your nouns. Five nouns I've started to do. Pillars, crowns, throne and robes. Uh, and then we're adding a bit more detail. So we're turning our noun into an expanded noun phrase. For example, the pillars, I've got detailed immense pillars. I've added a verb and an adverb there, although the adverb is optional, and a prepositional phrase. So my sentence completed will be, the detailed immense pillars stood tall in each corner of the room. So just a quick reminder, a noun is something that you can see or touch. Example, crown, table, necklace. A expanded noun phrase are our two A sentences. It is two adjectives, an adjective is a describing word, and then followed by the noun, so the sparkling royal crown. Remember we put it comma in between our two adjectives are two. A verb is a doing, being or having word, for example, jumping, dancing, stood, sat. And then prepositions, so there is an LBQ task on today uh, to help you how to use prepositions, uh, but a preposition is basically either a word that indicates a place or direction, for example, across, into, between, or it describes a relationship between the subject of a sentence and another object. So, the apple was under the table, the glider flew through the air, uh, the boy walked towards school. So again, your task, um, it's explained on the worksheet, but you're using the illustrations from the book, I put the pictures on there. Pick five names and build them up, uh, build your sentence up to be a more descriptive sentence.